Hello everybody. So I will continue now on the lecture about mortality and uh, here I will focus on this technique called standardization in which we will standardize the measures of crew death rates in order to compare among two uh, different countries in, in this example here. So I'm going to go to slide 16 to restart this portion of the lecture. So the age-specific death rates that we discussed in the previous lecture and not the crude death rates should be used to compare the mortality experiences of countries that have different uh, age compositions. So we use uh, standardization to take into account age composition when we compare death rates among different countries. We can compare crude death rates for different countries or for the same country over time if that country is experiencing some changes in age composition as well. So we need to adjust for differences in age structure of two different countries in, in the same year, for example, or of the same country uh, through time. We estimate age-adjusted death rates and apply to a standard population. So just to explain why do we have to do this standardization. We cannot simply add, uh, add up the age-specific death rates and multiply by the width of the age interval, because if we had that, that measure would, which would be called total mortality rate, you would say that if people were exposed throughout their lives to those age-specific death rates, they would die so many times throughout their life which doesn't make any sense because people die just once. So, but that kind of uh, rate makes sense for age-specific fertility rates, as we saw in previous chapters, uh, when we use the age-specific fertility rates to estimate total fertility rates. So how is it uh, the total fertility rate is estimated? We pretty much add up all the age-specific fertility rates and multiply by the width uh, of the, the age group. So in this case, the total fertility rate is um, interpreted as being what's the average number of children that woman would have if they were exposed to this specific age specific fertility rates throughout their childbearing years. And that makes sense because people or women, they can have more than one child. So it would make sense to have a TFR uh, greater than one. But for mortality, that would not make sense. So we that's the reason that we have to come up with other indicators in order to compare mortality levels of different countries. And the age standardization is one of these techniques. As we talked before, young populations, they tend to have low crude death rates because young people have lower chances of dying. So they usually have lower crude death rates, and old populations, they tend to have high crude death rates exactly because older people, they have higher chances of dying. So what we pretty much have to do is to estimate another uh, crude death rate, a variation of the crude death rate that will allow us to account for age composition when comparing death rates among different countries. So we pretty much I use the age-specific death rates that we have, and we multiply them by this information here from a standard population. What is this information? It's pretty much the population in a specific age group, in age group X, which goes from um, age X to age X plus N, divided by the total population in that specific place or in that specific country. So what you have to do is get the age-specific death rates of country A, for example, and then uh, apply the age composition of a country B into that age-specific death rates of country A, and then finally you are able to um, compare the crude death rates of country A with the crude death rates of country B. So that's what I'm going to show you now here with the example of crude death rates for the US and Venezuela. So this is the information of, uh, for the US in 2006. This is uh, how many 
people are in each one of the age groups going from 0 to 1 until 100 plus in the US in that specific year. That's the total population. And here is pretty much just the proportion of the population in each one of these age groups. So we're pretty much getting 4 million divided by 298 million. We get 0 0.0139. Uh, that's the proportion of people in this specific age group in the US in 2006. In that same year, this were the number of deaths that were counted in each one of these age groups. If we get this number of people who died in this specific age group and we divide it by the people in that age group, we have the age-specific death rate for that specific age group. So a total of 2.5 million people died in, in the US in 2006 out of 298 million people. And if we get this number divided by this number here and we multiply it by 1,000, we have a crude death rate of 8.41. So 8.41 people in the US died in 2006 out of every 1,000 people. So that's how this number we got, getting this 2.5 divided by 298. And what's the data for Venezuela? We also have the distribution of the population in Venezuela in 2006 by age groups getting each one of these numbers here and divided by the total population, which was 20, a little over 22 million, we get the proportion of the population in each one of these age groups. And this were the number of people who died and that were counted in each one of these age groups. And if you get each one of them and divide the population in that specific age group, we have the age-specific death rates. And the total number of people who died in Venezuela in that specific year divided by the total number of people in Venezuela in that specific year multiplied by 1,000, we have 4.61. So 4.61 people in Venezuela died uh, in 2006 out of every 1,000 people in Venezuela. So just going into the previous slide, the crude death rate in the U.S. Is, was 8.61. Uh, 0.4 per 1,000, and in Venezuela, 4.6. So Venezuela had an observed crude death rate that's smaller than in the U.S. So why that happened? That's because Venezuela has a younger population than the U.S. In other words, the U.S. has an older population than Venezuela, and this is causing the crude death rate of the U.S. being greater than the crude death rate of Venezuela. And just to show you this in, in this table, this is pretty much the information of the percentage distribution of people in the U.S. in each one of the age groups, and this one is from Venezuela. If we just go back to the previous slide here, Remember the proportion of the population, 0 0.0219, if we multiply this by 100, we have the percentage distribution. And we do the same thing for the U.S. And what you see is that these uh, percentages here for Venezuela, they are higher for younger groups when comparing to the U.S. And they are lower for older groups when comparing to the U.S. And just to make it even clear how that happens, if you just divide this percentage here from this column for the, for the U.S. by the column of Venezuela, you have this ratio here. So whenever this ratio is below one unit, you have more people in Vene or proportionally more people in Venezuela in these age groups instead of in the U.S. When this ratio is above one unit, which happens starting on the age group 35 to 39, it means that in the U.S. proportionally you have more people in these groups here than in Venezuela. So that's exactly what you see. More people in the U.S. proportionally in older groups and less people in the U.S. proportionally than in Venezuela in younger groups. And just to look at this age distribution here uh, for the U.S. and Venezuela in the graph format, the same information here in the graph format, that's what we have here in this graph. So we see that in the U.S. proportionally you have fewer people 
in younger groups and more people in older groups. The blue line and Venezuela has more younger people and, and less older people proportionally compared to the US, the, the red line here. Just going back to the previous slide, this ratio here, just showing this in a graph format, I show you in this I slide. So here, for ratios that are below one unit, we have fewer people in the US proportionally than in Venezuela. And if it's above one unit, more people in the US proportionally than in Venezuela in those uh, age groups. So more people in the US proportionally in the older groups and less people proportionally in the US in, in the younger groups. But when we look at the age-specific death rates uh, in a graph format from the US and Venezuela that I showed in previous tables, we see that pretty much here the rates, the age-specific death rates for the US um, are lower than for Venezuela. So the US here, the, the blue line or the blue curve has lower rates than Venezuela. If you do a zoom in here for these specific age groups, you will see that uh, the US has lower age-specific death rates even for younger groups as well compared to Venezuela. So what we have to do is to standardize the age-specific death rates of Venezuela in the US before you compare the crude death rates of these two countries, exactly because the age composition of these countries are so different, we cannot just um, compare their death rates without taking into account the age composition that I showed in previous graphs that would kind of uh, show that actually the rates of the chances of dying in Venezuela are higher than in the US. So how do we do this? So we get the observed uh, age-specific death rates from Venezuela that I showed in previous tables. And here is this, uh, the proportion of the population of the US by age groups. And this proportion of the population of the US by age groups is going to function to us as the standard population. So we are pretty much saying, let's get this population here from the US and apply the risks of dying to Venezuela. If the population in the US with this age distribution here was exposed to these death rates from Venezuela, how many people would die? That's the, that's the exercise that we are doing here. So we pretty much apply that formula that I showed at the beginning. We multiply these observed rates to the standard proportion of population, and then we get this Venezuelan uh, rates times the U.S. proportion of population. We get them all here. We add them all and multiply by 1,000. So now the um, um, Venezuela crude death rate taking the U.S. population that is standard is 9.68 deaths per 1,000 people in Venezuela. So now it increased a lot comparing to the, to the previous exercise. Another way to get into the same result here is to get, the again, the population in the U.S., and this is, these are the absolute numbers, the, the raw population. In, in this case, here we have uh, a little above 4 million people in the U.S. between the ages of 0 and 1. And we get the same uh, age-specific death rates observed for Venezuela. And we multiply one by the other. So what we are doing here is saying if this population here from the U.S. in this specific age group was exposed to this age-specific death rates from Venezuela, how many people would have died? So if these children here, between 0 and 1 years of age, or babies, they were exposed to these mortality rates from Venezuela, we would have 67,000 deaths, a little more than 67,000 deaths in this specific group. And if we add all these deaths here, we have 2.8 million. And if we get this 2.8 and divide by 298 million, multiplied 
by 1,000, we get 9.68. So 9.68 deaths in Venezuela per 1,000 people, taking the U.S. Uh, population at the standard. So this 9.68 is the same as the previous slide. So this exercise here in this slide is the same one as in this one here. So uh, since the U.S. population is the standard, we do not have to recalculate the crude death rate for the U.S. because the rate, the crude death rate for the U.S. is already taken into account the population of the U.S., the observed one. And so what we did now for Venezuela, we got the observed age-specific death rates from that country and applied to the standard population, the U.S. So here we have a summary. The original crude death rates from the U.S. were 8.41 deaths per 1,000 people. The original one from Venezuela, we had 4.61 deaths per 1,000 people in Venezuela. But when we get the age-specific death rates from Venezuela and we apply to the same population of the U.S., taking the U.S. as, uh, as the standard population, we get 9.628 deaths in Venezuela per 1,000 people. So what it means is that actually the, the overall level of mortality in Venezuela is not lower than the U.S. If we apply the chances of dying uh, in Venezuela to a same population, to an older population, which in this case is the U.S., actually the overall level of mortality in Venezuela is higher than in the U.S. So, in this case here, we get the rates of mortality from Venezuela and apply to the same population from which we got this number, and then we have higher mortality levels for Venezuela. These um, computations that I showed here, all these tables and graphs and formulas and everything, they're, they're available in an Excel spreadsheet in the course website. So you can pretty much just download it there. It's going to be a zipped file, a compressed file. You just uncompress it and you can see how the calculations were done um, using Excel and using Microsoft Excel, and which is pretty much what I, I showed here in this lecture. So that's what I had to talk about in standardization of crude death rates, in this case with an example for the U.S. and Venezuela. Thank you very much.